fellas, fellas, fellas. There's a lot of men out there who are not where they want to be financially. And um, I just want to share this video with you because I want to I want to give you my thoughts, my advice and my impression on this whole premise that you're not where you want to be financially. First of all, I want you to know that it's perfectly normal to not be where you want to be financially. But what I will tell you is don't beat yourself up too much about it. Don't put yourself in a dark place because of it. And you don't have to associate being where you want to be with success and where you are right now is failure. Now, some of you aren't treating it that way, but a lot of you are. And I know based off of the conversations that I've had, I know based off of the people that I know and that I've seen and that I've talked to and things like that. And what I will tell you is, again, it's normal to not be where you want to be in life in general, especially financially. But for one, you need to be thankful for where you're at, because there is somebody somewhere in this world who would love to be where you're at right now and would do borderline malicious things to get to where you are right now. And you may not think that or realize that, but it's the truth. You're better off than somebody in some regard, most likely better off than a lot of people, a lot more people than you can even think of. But the second thing you need to realize is. As understandable as it is to not be where you want to be, what's unacceptable is allowing yourself to stay there knowing that you're not where you want to be. That's when the self-hate comes in. That's where the feeling like a failure comes in. When you know you're not where you want to be, but you're just not doing anything about it. And there's plenty of men out here like that. And then you start labeling yourself as a loser, a deadbeat. Uh, whatever, like whatever term that comes to your mind. And that's just not healthy for you. And I don't think that's going to make you wake up in the morning and go any harder than you're already going. So I just want you to, first of all, understand that. And another thing I will tell you is you have to start setting goals for yourself, even if they're the smallest goals. A goal could be have a thousand dollars in my savings account by the end of the month or by the end of next month or the next three months, whatever the case is. Starting off by setting those goals and then doing the things necessary, which would be habits to get to those goals. Those are ways you can start to slowly but surely improve your situation. If you're in credit card debt, set yourself a goal to get out of that credit card debt by a certain date. Make sure it's a deadline and do whatever you can in between that time that's legal to get out of that credit card debt. You might take on some overtime at work. You might start pressure washing people's houses, which can be very lucrative, by the way. That's what I used to do. You can start cutting people's grass. But what I'm saying is there's always something that you can do about something and sitting around feeling sorry for yourself ain't going to do it. And it doesn't matter what that something is like that something being where you want to be could be uh, investing comfortably every single month, a thousand dollars or more. Being where you want to be could be having twenty thousand dollars, forty thousand dollars in your savings account. Being where you want to be could be making six figures a year at your job or it could be making passive income doing something you love. So it doesn't really matter what it is. If you don't get there by a certain time, you can start to feel sorry for yourself. You can start to start feeling like a failure and like less of a man just because you haven't achieved those things. And social media hasn't really made it any easier because everybody on social media swears they're rich. They swear they got money. They swear they live the lifestyle they want to live. And you just don't know. You don't know these people. You don't know what their lives look like. You might know what they put on Instagram. You might know what they put on YouTube, but you do not know what they live like. Some of y'all don't even know what your friends' lives are like outside of when you hang out with them. It's the truth. So if you don't even know the people that are closer to you because you don't live with them, how are you going to possibly know the people that you've never even met? You know what I mean? So I want you to think about that concept for the rest of this video. But moving on to my next point, something else you've got to realize is... No one's going to save you, but you, you're, you are nine times out of 10, 9.9 times out of 10 going to be the one that is fully responsible, fully accountable, 
and fully in control of getting you out of your situation. So there's no waking up one morning with a million dollars on your lap. There's no waking up one morning to a check at your door for the exact amount of money that you want to have in your savings account. There's none of that. There's going to be things that can help you along the way, but I promise you there's never going to be a time where somebody just jumps out of your TV screen and hands you money or gives you handouts or just does any of that stuff for you. That's 100% not going to happen. You might read some things sometimes that might help give you a breakthrough. You might hear some advice here and there that can help you. Oh, okay, that's what I need to be doing. But you have to still put those things into action. Let me give you an example. There used to be, I, for years, I would go through this time where I felt like I wanted to be successful. I wanted to do certain things. But when it came down to doing what I needed to do, I really wasn't doing nothing. Like, this was before my youth. Like, this was before I had a YouTube channel and all that stuff. I knew I wanted a YouTube channel, but I didn't know what it was going to be about. I wasn't putting in the work to actually start planning out the YouTube channel or anything like that. Right? And one time I came across this piece of advice that said, if you don't know what you're going to be doing tomorrow, you're already messing up. You should have your whole week planned out. And that was a game changer for me. So what did I start doing? I started planning out my whole week, Monday through Friday. I knew exactly what I was doing. I even knew what I was doing on the weekend. And you know what that came in handy for? When I started making all my videos that I made last year, the year before that, it helped me out with when I wrote my book because I knew exactly what time of each day I was going to be writing my book and for how long. And I committed and honored that time that I gave myself. I put it on my calendar. And so I sectioned off every piece of every day. And that was a tool to get myself closer to where I wanted to be. And of course, there were some days I didn't want to write the book. I didn't want to get on camera and hit record. But I did because I had a message that is much bigger than me and much bigger than the temporary feeling of tiredness or like I didn't feel like doing it. I had a message for people who really, really needed it that it could really, really change their lives and have improvements in their lives. So I had to put myself to the side and be like, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. So sometimes where you want to be, you got to make it bigger than you. A lot of us want to be rich. A lot of us want to have a lot of money. A lot of us want to have endless opportunities and not have to be tied down to a job for the rest of our lives. A lot of people feel like that. You're not alone. But if you don't feel like doing what's necessary to make those results happen so that you have what you want, you're not going to do it. But as soon as you start tying things to family members, people that you love, now all of a sudden you start to go a little harder. You have to sometimes make the things that you want bigger than who you are. Because there's a difference between thinking in terms of, oh, it would be nice to make a million dollars a year. It would be nice to be making six figures a year. But then when you see the hours that are associated with that, then you're like, nah. There's a difference between that and saying, I will get $100,000 a year. I will get a million dollars a year. There's no maybe, there's no might, there's no if with that. There's definitive language in that. It's I will. You have to start declaring that you'll do it. And I'm not saying that you should be in front of a mirror, not that there's anything wrong with it, but I'm not saying to go in front of a mirror and say this in front of you every single day and affirm it to yourself because I, I personally don't think that that's what makes people rich. It might help you build confidence, but it's definitely not going to make you rich like, like that's just not going to happen. But you need to let yourself know what your goals are and commit yourself to it is mainly what I'm saying by saying that. And maybe you might even need to reconsider exactly where you want to be. Maybe start off with the basics first. Can we can we get out of debt first, right? Can we get out of credit card debt? Can we pay off our student loans and then start talking about where we want to be? Because these are the steps necessary to take as you're doing certain things, getting out of the high interest debt like your credit card debt, building up your savings account and your emergency fund and understanding how to do that. And I have a ton of videos, but I would recommend watching my video, how to double your savings because I show you how to automate your savings account in that. And that's going to ultimately help you build more money if you haven't started doing that already. A lot of people who are not where they want to be financially, they've gotten on a coaching call with me. And the first question I asked them, well, okay, so how do you go about saving your money? And then they tell me like this long answer of, well, I do this and do this. And then lastly, I save money. But I'm like, well, have you thought about one, 
saving money first before you spend money on any expenses? And two, have you thought about automating your savings so you commit to a specific number every single month without having to think about it? And that's the first thing that happens in your bank account that month. And then nine times out of 10, they say, I never thought about that. So what I'm saying is there's things you can do now to make your situation a little bit better. And every little bit that you do is going to keep adding up and adding up until eventually you get to where you want to get to. So here's the thing that I want to tell you now. As you make these improvements, as you make these plans for yourself, as you make these goals for yourself, do not get too comfortable. Because at some point, you are going to be where you want to be. Because check this, check this example out. It's common for people not to be where they want to be. And even I'm not where I want to be financially, right? But right now... I am so much further along than I said I wanted to be five years ago. You see what I'm saying? So you have to constantly change where you want to be as you continue to grow and evolve financially. And the same thing goes for everything you do in life as a man. You should always strive for more and strive for better. You make six figures, that's great. How can I double it? I'm making $100,000 now. How can I get it to 200? That's the mindset that you should have. If I'm making $60,000 now. I should make 120. How do I get to that? And it's not about being greedy. It's about providing more for your family. You get what I'm saying? And you might have got a promotion at your job. Maybe you don't want another promotion right now because maybe you feel like it'll be too many hours on you. But what you can do is say, well, how can I be the best performer possible? What things can I do while I'm here at work to make myself a better performer? When you're at the gym, how can I get more endurance? How can I build more strength? When I'm running, how can I build more speed? How can you be a better father? How could you be a better friend? How could you be a better dad? Whatever it is that you are in this world, you should always be seeking to do better. Because you can't get all your fulfillment from money. You just can't. So even if you're not where you want to be financially, if you're tackling that in all other areas of your life, including financially, I promise you, you will feel fulfilled. You will feel much happier and you won't be associating your value and your self-worth purely with just your career or purely just money. But in order to do that, you have to make yourself a little bit uncomfortable. You might end up doing things that you've never done before. Like, if you know that you're not the most confident man in the world, maybe in some spaces you are comfortable, but when it comes to talking in front of people, maybe you're just, you shell up a little bit. Maybe you feel a little fearful. Maybe you feel like everybody in the room is just really analyzing you and nitpicking every little mistake that you make, and then you start to stutter over your words. You might take up public speaking. You might take up the next opportunity at work to present something, maybe a project or something. Because you have to grow out of your weaknesses. Maybe you're someone that saving money never came natural to. And now I'm over here telling you to start automating your account. And maybe you just start automating it. And maybe it's uncomfortable at first because you're used to having that extra $300 at the end of the month. But instead, you go ahead and send it over to a different account so you don't touch it. And maybe you feel the pressure a little bit. But you have to grow out of the things that you're almost unwilling to in order to grow out of your situation. Does that make sense? You might want to lose weight, but you're going to have to do some uncomfortable things to do it. You might have to eat less calories. You might have to hit the gym more. You might have to break a sweat. You might have to start running a little bit. None of that's comfortable. You might be sore afterwards. You might be rethinking your life afterwards. But after you do it consistently, And all of this whole video is about is consistency. As you do these things consistently, you become a better man. You become stronger. You become wiser. You become more resilient. You become tougher. You become better financially. You become smarter financially. And that's another thing. If you want to build a skill and make more money, it ain't just going to be given to you. You got to add some value first. Build a skill. What skills are you building? You might have to read. You might have to go through some boring nights. You might have to sacrifice some nights out with your friends to just be alone in the quiet reading, studying, learning, going through trial and error, making mistakes, getting frustrated. Sometimes you have to go through these things as a man to continuously get better and better and better. And that's how you get out of a situation that you don't want to be in. You have to do things that you don't want to do. That's what you have to do. That's what I've realized. 
I've ran myself through the ringer every single year since I've been on my own. I promise you I have. I didn't used to like speaking in front of people. Now I do it every single week, almost on a daily basis. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's something that becomes so natural. You know, things that came natural to me back in the day was lifting weights, being in shape and stuff, doing martial arts. Those things came natural. Those things didn't feel like growing pains for me. They felt like fun. But speaking in front of people, leading people, speaking to an inanimate object as if it's one of my friends and looking at it into its eyes, which is the camera lens that I can see my reflection in. And it kind of confuses me sometimes going to work, knowing that me and me only is responsible for my success in life and driving back home. Even if I failed going right back the next day and the next day and the next day, seven days in a row, 12 plus hours a day. Going to seminars, seeking mentorship from people within my job, reading books, listening to podcasts. I put myself through the ringer. Growing pains are still pains, but they do pay off. And eventually the pain wears off. You have to keep going as a man, even if you feel low, even if you lost a family member, even if you're going through a breakup, even if your heart is broken, even if you're tired. Don't nobody care if you're tired. That's why I said, ain't nobody coming to save you. Nobody. I'm not saying that any of what I said is is the right thing. Like, it, it should be this way 100%. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's how it is. It's true. No one cares if you're tired. No one cares if you're heartbroken. No one cares if you're sad. You still have to output something as a man. You still have to give value as a man. You still have to perform as a man. There's very little sympathy in this world for you. So you have to pick yourself up every single time. And that's something else I had to teach myself how to do. And sometimes you can lean on your friends and your family and stuff, but they have lives too and they have stuff they're going through. And not all of them are going to be emotionally available for you. So sometimes you have to learn how to be alone, learn how to pick yourself up and learn how to set your goals and accomplish them and go for them with relentless intent in such a way that nothing in this world, nothing on this planet is going to stop you. That is the message I have for any man who is not where they want to be financially. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.